Alternatively, there is the dark side, where Twitter becomes no different than a Chan board. Okay. There's a lot of stuff to talk about with uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter, and I have I, I have some opinions. Unfortunately, uh, they are they are <laughs> they are many. But let's go ahead and get to fan art, and then we will get into that little conversation. The first bit of fan art we have here is from Wind Dragon. It's a Dragon Girl Service V2 because I felt like it. Gotcha, gotcha. The next one we have here is from Ink. It said, Timer Coon rises from the dead. Well, subathons do be infinite, though, don't they? The last one we have is from Nerdish NB. Said, here's my take on Cirrus's leather battle armor on the Neko 3D model as a formal, full-length two-piece dress. I am not good at drawing bodies, so it's just a basic female model. I hope you enjoy. I can imagine that as like I go to a uh as, as like I go to a ball to murder people with a hammer, and that's the uh that's the outfit I wear. <laughs> Anyways. As always, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in future episodes, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. And with that said, let's go ahead and talk about this. Elon Musk has spent $40 billion buying Twitter. Now, originally he had bought uh, a, like what, 11% share in Twitter? Uh, and then didn't end up on the board of directors um, due to various reasons they felt that it would be best not to have him on the board. Uh, there's a billion reasons why it might be. One could be that he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't likely pass the background check. Uh, another one would be that uh, one of the actual bits of things that you have to adhere to when you were on a board is you have to operate within the best company. Uh, within the best interests of the company. And Elon might not be able to do that, given his uh, his verbose nature. Jeez, who did he buy uh, for this to happen so fast? Um, I mean, when you've, when you've got multiple billions of dollars, I mean, there's that. Now, the end result, though, is apparently he's he's got himself the Bird app. And there's a lot of conversation to be had about this. There's people who are deleting their Twitters as we speak because, well, it's going to be a hellscape because he is in control and he's going to make it a, a free speech haven, quote unquote. We need to kind of talk about that real quick. First of all, let's assume uh, that 10, 20, 30, even 60 percent of uh, lefty Twitter users delete their Twitter because they hate Elon Musk uh, and rightfully so. Or they just they don't want to be there for the hellscape that it's going to become uh, when he introduces more lax speech policies on the platform. Let's uh, let's talk about the type of hellscape that the website becomes when you do that, because when you engage in that kind of behavior, yeah, it's a it's a valid form of protest. Sure. But you're not really going to affect Twitter all that much, and you are just going to be creating a self-fulfilling prophecy where it does become that kind of a right-wing hellscape. Uh, remember that the Twitter algorithm, as it is, uh, filters people to you based on who you engage with in general. So if you engage mostly in lefty spaces and mostly in niche spaces for your hobbies, so long as the Twitter algorithm doesn't change... Your user experience won't change a whole much, like won't change all that much. I don't think anyway. Now, if you want to protest uh, this buyout, then yeah, there's a bunch of ways you can do it. Uh, there are denial of service things that you can engage in, uh, like flooding Twitter with just copious amounts of Sonic porn. Like there's lots of ways you can do it, but we're not here to talk about that. We're not here to talk about the ways in which you can try to uh, to change a thing that you cannot change that has already happened. I mean, if you're protesting Elon Musk buying Twitter, what what is the end? What is the end goal? What do you what do you think is going to happen? Like, what do you think is going to happen functionally uh, when you when you engage in a protest? If you leave the platform, we engage in the self-fulfilling prophecy of creating a much more right-wing platform by nature of the left-wing leaving it. Um, and if we all stay and then try to make it a more agitating website to be on, 
then it just becomes a more agitating website to be on, which was the thing you were protesting in the first place. It, it's a weird thing. So, yeah, I think malicious compliance is definitely one of the best things uh, you can do here. He wants to make it a free speech platform that uh, doesn't censor people. Cool. Uncensored Sonic the Hedgehog foot fetishes go. That's that's the world they wanted to live in. That's the world we create. Cool. What does this actually change? So I've noticed that a lot of the conversations lately have floated around the idea that uh, Elon should have spent that money on something else. Uh, ended homelessness or ended world hunger. We have some conversations about that. Now, the United Nations uh, put together a bit of a plan uh, that could actually end world hunger with six to seven billion dollars. Now, how effective the plan would be, I don't know, but there was the meme where Elon said, if the United Nations presents me with an actual plan, uh, then I will donate that six, seven billion dollars and we'll go ahead and get to that. But let's go ahead and check here. The United Nations tells Elon Musk how his money could end world hunger. The Tesla founder has offered to pay to end world hunger if the UN explains how it would spend. Responding to the challenge, the UN's World Food Program has produced a detailed plan to stave off global famine. The UN's $6.6 billion proposal could help 42 million vulnerable people survive 2022. And yet, this doesn't, uh, this doesn't really happen. Billionaires' jobs are not to end world hunger. We wish it were. We wish it were the case. I believe they have a moral obligation too. But in their eyes, their job is not to end world hunger, and moral conversations will not change their minds. I, I've said it before, and I've seen it said multiple times. But anytime somebody says a billionaire should do this to make the world a better place, or a billionaire, if I were a billionaire, I would do this thing. All of the things that you say you would do uh, would be the exact things that would prevent you from becoming a billionaire. All of the things you would do to change the world, the mentality required to do those things is the opposite of the mentality required to be a billionaire. Billionaires are sharks. Billionaires are parasites. If you want them, if, if you want them to do a wonderful thing uh, and do more of that wonderful thing than the bad things they do, they stop being those things, and eventually they stop being billionaires. That is the unfortunate reality of things. So let's talk about that 40 million, because we already know Musk was not going to put 6 billion to ending world hunger. What does that 40 billion do? Well, one of the things proposed uh, was Elon could have instead uh, tried to end homelessness in the United States. Now, let's go ahead and do a little quick math here. How many homeless in America. We have an estimated half a million people who are homeless. An estimated half a million people. So, we bust out our handy calculators. We have 40, 40 billion dollars divided by 55,000 people. That's 55,000. That's the wrong one. See, this is why leftists are bad at uh, economics. None of us can fucking do math. So, for $40 billion, we could be giving every homeless person in the United States the equivalent of a year's salary. Which, if spent all at once, uh, assuming that most of them don't have a terrible lot of money to begin with, um... You, you can buy a house for less than this much, depending on where you live. Yeah, I think that's probably much more of a worthwhile uh, spend than buying the bird app because my frisbee speech. I live in Georgia. We have enough freeze peaches here. So I feel that. So a year's salary, that's almost two years. I didn't even make minimum wage. So when I say a year's salary... This is, what was it? The last time it was calculated, like, at about seventy to $75,000, that's about the equinox for being financially stable and being able to put away enough in savings to be just happy. Like, the happiness index does not increase a whole lot past this threshold. $75,000 a year and $100,000 a year, so long as you're not living in a place that requires a six-digit salary to survive... 
don't feel all too different once you get to those numbers. At least that's what it was ages ago. Said so nowhere close for me. Okay, well. But that would be a year's salary for uh to be at you know functionally happiness index for most people. When I was coming out of high school, this was probably about what six six years salary right there. McDonald's doesn't pay a whole lot. It really didn't. In some places that can buy land and a small house. Yeah, this is uh this is less than my mortgage. Or this is not less. This is more than my mortgage. With that much money, uh, I, my, my house would be bought and I would not have a mortgage anymore. B boom, it'd be done instantly. Woo! Completed. For $40 million, that is something that Elon Musk could have done. Ending United States homelessness would be possible with that amount of money. Hell, as it stands right now, the United States spends about, th uh, what is it? About $35,000 in, uh, in government costs for its homeless population per homeless person via various shelter programs and other like attempts at financial assistance. Literally a cash injection like that would change multiple people's lives. And I've seen people like Destiny and others uh, trying to say not only the uh, it's not his business, it's not his job type of deal. I've also seen the argument made that, well, the homeless people would just spend their money on booze and drugs. Didn't you see the series that was done by Clark Howard where he handed a homeless person $10,000 and they just spent it on booze and drugs and shit? Here's the deal. When somebody has never had a lot of spending money, they do not generally know how to manage themselves when they come into a lot of it. They don't know how to invest it. They don't know how to make their money stretch. They, they, even if they knew how to make their money stretch over long periods of time, when you have no choice but to last an entire month off of 60 to $70, where you're using peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and ramen to survive the entire time, versus when you have the ability to go out to eat every night, and so you just do, because that's a lot more convenient, and you haven't had a dopamine hit in a very fucking long time. Yeah, you do run into those people. But here's the thing. I guarantee you that it would not be every homeless person that would fall into those situations. And for those that did, we need to have a conversation past that about how we treat people who suffer from severe drug addictions. We tend to jail them. Uh, which, by the way, costs us more taxpayer dollars. Um, so there is that. But we don't tend to treat uh, those in our population who actually deal with drug abuse. We don't treat them very well. We villainize them. We try to take their rights away as opposed to just getting them help to get off of everything that we've been doing or that they've been doing. It is very likely that in that kind of environment, the minute you have enough money to buy enough smack to forget all of your life's woes, you will probably end up doing that. But that is not all homeless people. In fact, I would even argue it's not most homeless people. It's not. If even half the homeless population in the United States, if even half of it were to become adequately housed by getting a cash injection of that kind, and were to start building up generational wealth of some variety, guess what? Our homeless population would then be lower than Canada's. The United States has about 17.6 homeless people per 10,000. Canada has about 10 per 10,000. And I know this is possible because the homeless populations of other countries prove that it's possible. Finland technically has a homeless population of 8.8 .8 per 10,000. But if you look at their sheltered population, their unsheltered homeless population is about 0.1 or 0.03 it was, I believe. But it is ridiculously low. It is almost 0%. The country has almost eliminated homelessness. 
in terms of inability to have a shelter provided by various means is concerned. Japan has also almost eliminated homelessness with its various support structures. And you can say a lot of things about Japan and how ruthlessly capitalistic it is in many cases, but living is at least a little easier there for those who do not have the means. And the numbers bear this out. Again, Canada has almost half our homeless population. We know that this is doable if we have adequately funded programs. And yet, $40 billion to buy the Bird app is where we want to go. Now, another fun deflection that comes here is, well, you didn't say anything when Bezos did X. You didn't say anything when Disney did X. Okay. If when Disney spent, what was it, $112 billion buying Fox? Or whatever the hell it was. When Disney did that, whether or not people spoke up about how they could better spend that money to benefit the world is irrelevant because it doesn't add to your point. I could engage in the, well, actually, I said X at X point, And well, my mentality was a little different back then. And I can play the game of what about when Bezos did X? What about when Disney did X? What about when Bill Gates did X? I can do that. Or I can try the much more effective route of pointing out that none of that matters. If we are having an argument about one billionaire and what one billionaire's money could have done to better the world that was instead spent on Twitter deflecting to a different billionaire in a different question is only doing one thing. It's allowing us to squirm away from the conversation at hand from the fact that a public platform has been bought by a single individual with the idea that it will then be privated. It will then be privatized afterwards. But let's pivot a little bit. Let's pivot to the kind of platform that I think Twitter is going to become. Because I think, personally, that we have a couple of scenarios ahead of us. Scenario one, uh, Twitter doesn't fucking change. Elon hops on and then uh, and business as usual carries on because we're all alarmists. That's one very likely scenario. Alternatively, there is the dark side where Twitter becomes no different than a Chan board, where the only way to effectively operate on the platform is to either be a sounding board for far right dementia or shitposting. Nothing but shitposting. Another alternative is that Elon will have the platform, deregulate it, and then after about three or four months, realize that deregulating a public forum is a terrible fucking idea. And one of the ways we can make sure he knows it's a terrible fucking idea is by spamming the entire thing with Sonic the Hedgehog with Fetishborn. Just letting you know that we don't just let the we don't just have to let the natural effect of random people who are far right idiots and even, yes, some idiots who are leftist extremists as well, tankies and the like. We don't need to just let them engage in the self-fulfilling prophecy of creating an environment where moderation is required. No, we can contribute to it, too, in a way that is much less harmful and much more funny and memey. Those are the scenarios that I think are going to happen. Do I think that Twitter is going to wholly be abandoned? No, I don't. Twitter has not only become one of the most ubiquitous platforms used by everybody, but it's also the first place corporations go. And that's kind of one of the most important things here. Twitter is funded primarily by advertising revenue, advertising engagement. When those companies start abandoning ship, that's when people like Elon will have to change the rules again. Zozo brings up a point in the chat. It really depends on if he bought it for money or if he bought it as retaliation against naysayers. If he bought it as retaliation against naysayers, then no matter what happens on the platform, um, it's it's it is going to sink. If he bought it for money, though. Eventually, he's going to have to make the financial decisions required to keep the platform afloat. And unmoderated free speech platform, those never work. Because invariably, the moderated platforms tend to have more people. 
The people who immediately flocked to the unmoderated platforms are the people who were kicked off of the moderated ones. Do I think then that a competitor to Twitter is going to actually come up? Who knows? There's no real way to know. I mean, we could all migrate to Facebook. Who knows? I don't think that's going to happen. While I have laid out three possible scenarios, I think likely the middle ground one is going to be the one that happens. I think it's going to be that Twitter is bought. It will be deregulated in a few months. And then Elon will have to re-regulate it bit by bit as he realizes the reason why those regulations were made in the first place. There's a saying when you work in any type of hands-on labor environment, and it's that regulations are bought and learned in blood. I know and this, this is a tweet that was brought up. You know, the extreme antibody reaction of those who fear free speech says it all. It's not that we free, uh, we fear free speech. It's that we know that there's a child's idea of free speech. I can say whatever I want. And then there's an adult's understanding of free speech. Where you are free to say whatever you want. You are not free from the consequences of those actions. The internet learned its lessons of moderation in old fucking new grounds forums and chan boards. I feel like we're going to see that happen again. If Elon does try to deregulate things, we're going to see all the lessons that led to those regulations coming back, uh, coming to pass, get learned all over again by one guy because he's privating the entire company. That is my thought. I think it's going to be that one, but it might just be business as usual the entire time. And it might be the fall of Twitter into a far right mess hall. It could be any of these things but I know which one my money's on. And yeah, there were much better things to spend that money on. What benefit was there to doing that instead of virtually eliminating homelessness in the United States versus spending a portion of that on eliminating world hunger? And again, if you want to deflect into Bezos or any other billionaire, I don't care. The conversation's not about them right now. We can have a separate conversation about them once you stop trying to pivot away from this one. But we're here now. This is the conversation of the moment. But I want to know your predictions and I want to know your thoughts because there's more to this that I am certainly not saying. Uh, and there's more ways you can protest and more ways you can engage in this particular conversation uh, that are just not being talked about because I'm one guy, but there's a billion maybe even 40 billion opinions that I am not currently looking at. We don't have 40 billion people on the uh, on the world yet. We don't. Musk could give everyone in the world a crisp dollar and it would be better than buying the bird app. <laughs> we have to basically uh, bet on Elon's intelligence. You know, I'm, I'm of the opinion that Elon definitely has average intelligence, but... The thing is, with most business people, they surround themselves with people who are better than them, and then they rely on their influence. I, I know this one to be true because I've read books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad and others where that exact strategy is mapped out. You surround yourself with people who know better than you so you can rely on their expertise because you aren't Batman. You will not have the knowledge of a thousand perfect people, but you can have a thousand perfect people around you and you can use that. Nike Bree says, my hope is that it's just Musk owns Twitter and it's just for money and nothing changes. And that would be my hope. However, I think my I think my prediction that it will deregulate for a bit and then we'll immediately have to re-regulate again. I think that would be the funny one. I think that would be the funny one because that's the one where everybody gets to go. Wow. Losing Grimes made him learn the lessons of childhood all over again. Anyways, with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been more of a rant than anything, but I want to know what you guys think. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. If you want to support my channel and what I do, there's a like button there. Uh, you can share this video with your friends. You can join my Patreon. Or you can just watch another video. It all comes down to you. As always, everybody, insert into video tagline here.